Okay. Thank you for your presentation. It was uh, clear. Sure. Uh, Okay. Yeah. He has 76 slides, but he won't run. Yeah, it's good. There's a lot of fun yeah, for actually. So, Ken Flo. Good afternoon. My name is Jake Fountain, and I'm from the University of Newcastle, from uh, Australia. And this year, uh, I competed as part of the New Box team in the Humanoid Kid Size League. I'm going to give you a, a brief overview of um, our paper on motivated <coughs> reinforcement learning, the directing head behaviour in the Darwin OP humanoid robots. So, that doesn't work. So, our uh, head behaviour is important because we have humanoid robots which um, have a limited field of view and we measure everything throughout. Um, humanoid vision, uh, anthropomorphic vision system. And we need to look at the objects at the right times to update our localization system with correct data at the right time. Um, and to do this, we can't look at everything at once. So you'll have choices at certain points to look at the goals, look at the ball, um, localize the robot or localize relative objects. Oh, thank you. Um, so we decided to use a reinforcement learning technique which uh, is not so heard of called motivated reinforcement learning. Um, that still doesn't work. Uh, where it, we generalize reinforcement learning by rather than generating an environmental reward, we take in actions and we calculate how novel those actions are. And based on that, we can calculate a motivation reward, and the agent will explore the state action space and make decisions based on that. And the idea is, by seeming curious, uh, the agent will um, make behavior decisions similar to a human. So we applied this to the head behavior problem by uh, allowing the agent to choose from several objects to look at at any given point and when the agent makes a decision about that object it searches for it and when it finds it it locks on and makes a new decision. Um, we generate an environmental reward based on the localization information of the robot so the localization information is stored as a probabilistic Kalman filter. We can get a sum summary statistic of that about how well the robot is, com how confident the robot is of its location. And we perform learning online while we're playing soccer games and the head behaves independently of the rest of the robot. So the state space was uh, constructed as a collection of key data values from the field, uh, including things such as ball distance, goal distance, uh, head cost to look at a particular object, time since the objects were last seen, things which would give us a good uh, way to make the correct decision. And the action space was five field objects, two, four goalposts, and a ball. We use, we use the uh, asymmetric field in all of our testing, um, just for simplification. And the environmental reward was based on the localization variance. So to calculate motivation reward, the equations are a little bit ugly, they're not that bad, but the figure is really all you need to see. At a, at a low novelty, so when the agent can predict what's going on, um, you have a, a low motivation reward, and at high novelty, the agent can't predict what's going on, and so you have low novelty, you have low motivation also. And in the middle is the sweet spot where you're not bored, but you're not confused, sort of thing. 
And this is called a want model. And it's, it's derived from a psychological experiment. So we tested various types of agents. We used one agent which uh, only paid attention to the environmental reward based on localization accuracy, one agent which only paid attention to motivational reward, and one agent which paid, paid attention to both in a sum. And to keep, we used Q learning with uh, the value function and the model for the transition function uh, stored as a Fourier basis linear approximator, which is essentially learning the Fourier, multi dimensional Fourier series expansion of the state action space and the transition function of the Markov decision problem. So we performed some initial training to give the um, agents some ground knowledge before we tested them. And it was found that in about an hour we could train agents which made capable head decisions um, and performed fairly well. And we found that playing soccer while testing was too difficult to get any quantitative results. So we used the kidnap static kidnap forever problem to give us a metric on how well the head performance was um, performing. Uh, and what we did was we placed the robot down in positions around the field and allowed it to make 20 decisions after resetting its localization. And we record the localization and uncertainty to gauge how well the robot's localizing at each point in, uh, after each decision. So the localization, this is the results. Uh, the localization award is how well, essentially, it's all relative units, um, how well the robot is localized and how well the ball is localized as well. Um, so you can see the uniform agent is an agent which chooses randomly from the objects that it can look at. So objects behind it, it cannot look at, but in front of it, it randomly chooses. And it sort of has a steady increase right to the last action. But it's easily beaten by the reinforcement learning and the combined agent, which is the agent that pays attention to environmental reward alone, but then the combined agent beats that again by a small amount. Um, and the motivated agent um, does not perform as well as the uniform agent. So we, we have an increase in three cases out of 15 different field locations of successful localization of the reinforcement learning and the combined agents over the uniform or motivated agents. Um, and localization from lost state is much faster. We have 18 actions versus th three and three in the combined than reinforcement learning agent. So in conclusion, um, this <coughs> provides a gen generic uh, extendable, so we should be able to extend this to more field objects quite easily. So if we have line, line detection implemented, we can look at those things quite easily. It's easy to train and it works well, and it does at least as well as um, simple methods. Like, And we ended up using it in the RoboCup, oops, this year's RoboCup, in the last couple of games that we had. We had a few problems in the first game, so we had to cut things out, but later on we got it working. And we had to do made, make a few changes, but overall it worked well. Thank you. presentation nice on time, so we have a little bit more time for questions. Come on. Uh, it has its localization um, uncertainty as a part of its state space, so it can tell when it needs to do perhaps a pan for the goals to localize itself. And the pan for the goals will take into account the uncertainty. So if he knows where the goals, if the robot knows where the goals are, it will look straight at them. But otherwise it will do a pan in the region it thinks the goals might be. So it, it pan localizes quite quickly for those reasons. So the, the assumption is you're optimizing while knowing your localization to a certain degree. Other question? I have one. 
um, the number of uh, uh, potential objects is quite uh, small yes. at, at the object. Yes. Is it possible to have some uh, really distinguished objects, say, with extending next to the field as uh, one of the uh, watch? It's very easy to extend it to arbitrary number of objects, and that's one of the strengths. That's what I'm hoping to. These results are fairly weak in terms of distinguishing between the head behavior and the but the reinforcement learning head behavior and the other standard behavior. Hopefully, when we have more objects to look at, we can get a more distinct result. Okay, moving forward. Thanks. So, it seems that the first is always at the last word. Oh, that's the, the, the extra.